Hi everybody, this is Pro Tour historian Brian David Marshall here at the Tournament Center, Pro Tour Dragon's Maze in San Diego. Rich Hagan, Pro Tour statistician with me. And we've been talking a lot, names that have been up on the big board, Gabriel Nassif, Brian Kildor, we throw around the term Hall of Fame. We talk about Kai Buda, John Finkel, we talk about the word Hall of Fame. What does it mean to be a Pro Tour Hall of Famer? We know what they get for being in the Hall of Fame. They get to come to the Pro Tour, mm -hmm. they're gold. How did they get to be in the Hall of Fame? And why, why are these players so consistently doing so well at the Pro Tour these days? I mean, we saw every single one of the Pro Tour Hall of Famers who came to Pro Tour Dragon's Maze made it to day two. And how many were there? It wasn't three or four or even seven or eight. 14 Magic Pro Tour Hall of Famers came here, laid it on the line and said, you know what kids, still got it. Yeah, and these guys have won Pro Tours, they've won Player of the Year titles, and you know, they still, like, you know what, I'm gonna take a week off of my life, I'm gonna go hole up in kind of a, a dark conference room, somewhere in a hotel, you know, I'm just gonna play Magic for a week and try to kick the butt of 300 other people here in the room. Let's take a look at some of the, uh, some of the Hall of Famers who were in attendance at this event and talk about how they got here. You can't start talking about the Hall of Fame without talking about two players in particular. John Finkel, a first ballot, first class Hall of Famer. He played at the very first Pro Tour. He's, been, he's still playing today, still competitive. Take a look at this, 509 lifetime Pro Points. He's platinum player again. He's won almost $350,000 playing Magic. And he will tell you, that, that 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 total does not include nationals. <laughs> and indeed it does not, at which he's rather good. You see there, Pro Tour New York champion, Worlds 2000. My first time in the commentary box was for Pro Tour Kuala Lumpur 2008. It was thrilling. I think Guillaume Wafatapa of France is one of the finest players, especially of control, ever to sleeve up magic cards. He lost three times at Pro Tour Kuala Lumpur in 2008, to John Finkel, this and line, John Finkel, and John line, Finkel. This line yep. is 14, 14 Pro Tour top eights. 14. We're not gonna see a number like that. We don't even have another double digit number on any of these slides. The most anyone else has gotten is nine. Oh, that's not true. Wait, wait, wait. wait that's but not true. Do you, do you know who has that nine? It's Gabriel Nassif. Yes. At 11 and four. Yep. With a chance a chance at the top eight. Making it so let's take a look at the next slide. Uh, argue, this is the player when you get into an argument about who is the best Magic player of all time, you argue John Finkel, Kai Buda. How, how can you argue? Kai, Kai only has 505 <laughs> Pro Tour points and John has 509. And, so. and, and the reason that Nationals money is so contentious, you see Kai has won just a hair more money at the Pro Tour Grand Prix <laughs> circuit than John Finkel. $362,000 John contends that with Nationals money he would be the number one money earner of all time in the game. Now, we talked about the 14 Pro Tour top eights for John Finkel, but when it comes to closing, have a look at this. 10 Pro Tour top eights for Kai, seven times he won the whole thing. Yeah, that's a 700 batting average once he gets to the top eight of a Pro Tour. Tell me what Phoenix Foundation is. Well, well actually, I know, but... Three three-person teams was a, a regular format. We, we're gonna see this in Grand Prix Providence in a couple weeks. Uh, Three-person teams was a regular format on the Pro Tour for a number of times. Three-person teams playing against other three-person teams. Phoenix Foundation was the end boss of three-person team formats. They just won multiple Pro Tours. Uh, Kai Buda, Dirk Babarowski, Marco Bloom from Germany. Just unbelievable. Yeah, so that's the juggernaut. Let's see who else we've got next. It's Brian Kibler. Well, this you is, know this, this guy. This is a name we've been throwing around a lot today. He has an outside, you know, probable shot at making the top eight here if everything fell his way. Uh, he's going to be 11-4. He's certainly going to be in the top 25 of this event. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you take a look, you know, young guy still, 367 lifetime points, almost a quarter of a million dollars won. And worth bearing in mind, he has a career hiatus in the mid-2000s. Won a Grand Prix in Toronto, only the sixth Grand Prix ever held, Toronto 1997. Around about 2004, so basically the left the game, came back five years later for Austin, Honolulu, and... Uh, Austin and Honolulu, yeah. those would be his wins. Yes, th yes, that's not his top eights, that's just his straight, honest to God, I won the Pro Tour. Five, five Pro Tour top eights. Which, by the way, is an astounding number. It's a lot of a lot of people consider it, you know, like the three thousand hits. 
of, yeah. of, the, of the Baseball Hall of Fame. You get five Pro Tour top eights, you have a really good shot at making it into the Hall of Fame. It's difficult, isn't it? Because five in and of itself is not a huge number. And you have to remember, including World Championships, there have only ever been 80 or so of these events in history. Around right about that, 80, 85. And there's only eight slots at every final table. So 650-ish chairs have been laid out on Pro Tour Sundays. And these guys have taken five, four, six, nine, 14 of them yeah. all for themselves. And, you know, not someone who rests on his laurels, yes, Hall of Famers get gold, he's platinum next season, again. So this is someone who's just dominating the game, doing really well, writing about the game, an amazing ambassador for the game. Who's next? Well, this was a kind of a surprise. Bob Marr is someone we haven't seen in a while. He's considered considered one of the top three or four players of all time. We saw him come in, make a great run early on, on yesterday. Let's keep moving through. Let's take a look at some of the other Hall of Famers who are here. Yep, who's next? next? We have Paolo Vita Dama De Rosa. Is he the third now, best player of all time? This is something you've put forth. I, I have argued that he very well could be. He has nine Pro Tour top eights right up there with Nassif, just behind Kai and John. 12 Grand Prix top eights. And the thing that I love, more than 63% win rate averaging at Pro Tours and GPs. Think of all the games you play at home where you don't see your third color of mana, where you keep five land and draw five more land, where you're playing mono red and the first three creatures your opponent plays say protection from red. That's happened to Paolo hundreds of times and still he averages two out of three. Yeah, Crazy. just a ph phenomenal player, great thinker about the game. Gabriel Nassif, we've been talking about him. One of my favorite Magic players. I love watching him. I love seeing the decks he brews up. I love watching him play. I love his attitude. Nine Pro Tour top eights. He's got two titles. He's got a title in the Grand Prix. That one of them that came like a week after winning a Pro Tour. And he's a consensus top five player of all time. Do you know what? The hits keep on coming. Who's next? Here we go. How it's V. Moshevitz. V. Moshevitz. He's won, he won a Pro Tour in Tokyo 2001, a block Pro Tour. He's got four Pro Tour top eights. He's done well at, Grand Prix, at the Grand Prix circuit. He's an amazing writer. I think one of the best writers uh, in the game. And uh, just one of the best deck builders that we've ever seen. Ever, absolutely. And on we go. This time we have Shuhei Nakamura to show you from Japan. 115 lifetime pro points. Yeah, now that's just crazy. And 20 Grand Prix top eights. This is the man who made global travel the thing to do. He went everywhere. He was a star of the European Grand Prix circuit. Played more than 2,000 Grand Prix and Pro Tour matches. It's just... 2,000, that's a literal time. <laughs> It's just crazy. Come on, keep them coming. All these people are here, Rob, remember. Speaking of deck builders, Rob Darty, mm -hmm. a great deck builder, had a great bet from him. He thinks, you know, he's constantly playing into day two, constantly doing well, top 32s. We see it all the time. He's like, it's kind of frustrating. I'm much a better player than I was when I was younger. I'm much more consistent. I hate it. I used to go to the Pro Tour. I'd crap out, I'd crap out, then I'd top eight. I'd crap out, and then I'd top eight. It was much more fun. Yeah, well, Raphael Levy would change with that. I guess Raph will be on here somewhere. Patrick Chapin is next. The Innovator, again, another great writer and deck builder for Pro Tour Top 8. Remember that amazing World Championship match between him and Hall of Famer Gabriel Nassif, one of the principal members of the Star City team. Let's keep the slide moving on. There you see Darwin Castle. He's someone we haven't seen in a while, you know, you know doing really well at one of these events. This is one of his best, uh, one of his best tournaments in a long time. Eight Pro Tour top eights, one title. He, of course, won a team event with Rob Darty and R&D member Dave Humphreys. Washington, 1999. Yeah. And he also played in the first ever Pro Tour. The first ever Pro Tour, 1996, New York. Do you know how you qualified for that? You picked up the phone and said, I'd like to play. It's not quite like that anymore, is it? Bram Snepvangers. Here, obviously a formidable player. He's got four Pro Tour top eights, but also here for his con community contributions. Yeah. Someone who's been a judge, a tournament organizer, you know, helped rise the rise the tide of Denmark, uh, 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 the Netherlands, I should say. Uh, you know, to make all these great players, great judges, a tremendous, tremendous uh, community contribution from Brom Stepfangers, uh, and uh, just you know, a kick-ass Magic player on top of that. Yeah, I, I think as a community, just absolutely extraordinary. Also from the Netherlands, it's Team Von Dutch when he won his Pro Tour in Seattle. Jelga Vigesma, 192,000. Uh, lifetime winnings in dollars, 366 lifetime pro points, a startlingly good player. Yeah, and, and talk a, about consistency. Yeah, 
he, he kind of defines the idea of my baseline is top 32. I'll start... He finished 17th in his first Pro Tour. Sure, I'll start at 11 and 5 and then see whether I win a couple of extra on top to make top 8. Okay, and moving on, we're not done, there's still more players. And here's Raf Levy with yeah. the all-time leader in Pro Points, 540 right now. 18 no. Grand Prix top 8s, 3 Pro Tour top 8s, 4th at Worlds and, uh, and Chicago. Uh, almost a quarter of a million dollars in winnings. Still a very young guy for someone who's been around forever. He's in his early 30s. Absolutely. Tremendous. Are we done well, now? What's, what's this done. about? These are the other players in the room right now who are all eligible for induction into the Hall of Fame in Dublin, Ireland at Pro Tour Theros. All of these players are eligible players. to be voted Harry for Brunson. by the Player wow. and Selection Committee. A couple of any names Harry jump Brunson. out at you? Have been yeah. All of them? Yeah, yeah. just a bit. There's Mr. Louis Scott Vargas down here. Mr. There's ben a, Stark. There's a show to Yasuoka and a Tomohiro Saito of Japan. Uh, uh, Paul Ritzel and right. Ivan Flock. Isn't Kenny this Ober. guy in the top eight? Craig Wesco could be adding to his already impressive top eight total. Text coverage. And not, not pictured, but here, not playing, Billy Jensen missed the Hall of Fame by one vote. One vote, a lone vote last season. Could very well be seeing him in Ireland this year. Those people are the history of our game. But they're not just the past, they're the present and the future. Yeah. And they are just startling magic players. 20 years later, they remain end bosses at the Pro Tour. People you have to get through. You're playing in the last round. You got to play Gabriel Nassif. You got to play Brian Kibler. You got to get through John Finkel at the start of day two of a pro tour. You know, th these guys are amazing. I hope you enjoy enjoyed our look inside these hollowed halls. For Rich Hager, I'm Brian David Marshall. Saying bye. <laughs>